everybody, this is Peggy for CropStop.com and I have so many cool things to show you tonight. I want to especially show you this crackle paint. A lot of people have bought it, they didn't really know how it worked, didn't know how to use it, so I decided to come up with a couple of ideas to show you how to use it. I used it on this flower. I'm not sure if the camera can pick up the little crackle right there, but we're going to show you how to do that. So, let me show you some of the other tools that we're going to use and then we'll get started. Of course, we'll use the crackle paint. I'm going to bring in some of these Kaiser Craft flowers. That's what I used on the front of this flower to show you how you can color that up to make it match whatever you're doing. So we're going to use some of those. We are going to use one of Tim Holtz, one of my favorite die cuts. This is the big flowers. What does he call these? Tattered florals. I call my flowers tattered flowers, whatever you want to call them. We're going to use that, or I did use that. And let's see what else. Oh, I also used his die cut, which I didn't bring the die cut in for this snowman. He is one of my all-time favorite snowmans. And I'm going to show you how I used grunge board to get this look. So we're going to do that. We are going to use an embossing folder from Creative Expressions. I love this one. Actually, let me bring my card back in and show you. That's where I used it right there. Then I just highlighted it. The reason I like these is they really emboss deep yeah, emboss deep so it's really out here. So when I take my ink pad over to do my ink pad to paper technique, it just really highlights that embossed area perfectly without getting a lot of it on the background. So you want to make sure to stop over and get some of these embossing folders from Creative Expressions. Let's see. Oh, I used this adhesive, and I've talked about this before, Scott's Quick Dry Adhesive. That's what I used to hold those Kaiser flowers on. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And of course, you know I have to use my Distress inks. I have several colors here that we're going to play with. So we're going to do that. Oh, and I want to show you this. Rock Candy Stickles. And tell you the secret about stickles. Shh, don't tell. And of course, then I brought in my tools. I'm going to use my famous little scissors. I love these scissors. And my little tool. This is my burnishing tool. So I use it a lot. And if you don't have a special pair of tweezers that you are in love with, I absolutely love these little tweezer bees because they are a non-stick material on here. So when I'm working with stickers, it I can take it off of there. I mean, it sticks on there, but it doesn't stick on there forever. I can actually remove them. So we're going to use those. Oh, and one more thing. The butterfly that I used on my card was this one from Martha Stewart. Now what's really nice about this one is the top of it. There's a stamp. Actually, there's three different little uh, acrylic stamps in there so that I can stamp whatever design. Let's see if I can bring this into the camera without moving so much. Here's one design. That's yellow cardstock that I stamped on there with my Distress ink. And there's another design. It's the same punch, but you stamp and you get it a little bit different look. So that's a really cool tool. So, well, let me clear some things off and let's get started. Now, what I want to start with is the Distress crackle paint. It's the clear rock candy. Now, the thing about this is what I like so much about it, I can use this and get the crackle effect on any paper. Let me just bring this in and show you. This is just a regular piece of cardstock, printed cardstock, and this side, obviously, I didn't do anything to. This side, I did the crackle paint on it. And let me see, can the camera bring in that crackle? Kind of, sort of. You see the little glaze and crackle? It's really tiny. And then what you do is you take your ink over top of that. So this is the same paper. So if I'm just doing your basic clean and simple kind of card, I'd use this. If I want to do a little more distressed look or a mixed media kind of look, I can make my paper, and it's even flexible, but I can make my paper look older, and it's the same piece of paper, so that I can use any color. Where does this come in handy? It comes in handy if I'm doing a project and I really want to use this paper. I don't then have to drag out my ink and try and say, okay, i got to try and match these. I can use printed paper and use my Crackle Rock Candy, and I get the same look. Let me just bring this in and show you if I were to use a little bit of my burlap brown on here. Now, I've already put a little bit on there, so I'm going to actually flip it to the other end. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to... You always tell you to go this way, you know, come in off the mat and go this way. This one I want you just to dab it because I want you to get into those cracks. So we're going to dab it in there like so. Make sure I really get it into those cracks because that's the whole purpose of the distressed look. Now, once I get enough ink on there and I'm happy, i close up my distress ink, just take your finger and rub it in and that's going to get it right down in those cracks oh yeah that's looking really good now a lot darker than the top part because I used a different color ink so this would make it look very collagey kind of a look or 
um, antique -y kind of a look if you were going for that look, but still get a little bit of color in the background. So let's see if the camera can pick that up. How's that look? Can we kind of see that? And then what I do, let me grab my little wipey here. You don't want this real wet. This is a little wetter than what I would want it. I'm just going to wipe some of that off because obviously my crackle paint acts as a resist so I can still see some of the color in there. I don't want to take it all off of there. So there you go. So that's one look. Let me show you another thing that I did. Bring these in so you can see. Where's my other little butterfly? He disappeared. This is a butterfly. I did the same kind of a thing. It all looks like this. And I put the, the rock candy on there and colored it in so I get a different look. So you can even do it on stickers. So that's a really neat thing. And I'll probably come up with something to work on that. Here's another sticker I did. Let me see. This is what it started out looking like. Your plain old simple flower. And then I crinkled it up. Put the rock candy on there. Inked it up with, I think I used Barn Dollar. I always say Barn Dollar. I don't know why I do that. Barn Door Red and a little bit of the Broken China on there. And then, I don't know if you can see the sparkle in there. That is another one of my favorites. The Rock Candy Stickles. Totally a different product than your Crackle Paint. The neat thing about the Distress Stickles, which I've shared before, you can actually heat these with your heat gun. If you heat regular stickles, it will melt and blister. It'll look horrible. You cannot use your heat tool with regular stickles, only with the Distress Stickles. And then you're going to put it in a blop. Let me just show you how you do that while I got it in my hand. You're going to stick a blop just like that. And then you rub it in with your finger. And I use my fingers a lot, so I don't get too excitable. Because you don't want to, you don't want to like make lines with this when it's distressed. Which, that's why they named it that, I guess. So you just wipe it around in there. And then I would take that over and I would hit it with a heat gun. And that's when you get that really cool sparkle. So stickers, you can use it on stickers. Oh my gosh, you're not going to believe all the stuff we can do. Let me bring in a piece of cardstock now. Some of my Distress inks. And I'm just going to color up this piece of cardstock. Now I went ahead and stamped it. Let me pull this up to the camera a little bit. With one of Tim Holtz stamps. I don't know what said it's from. I've had it forever and a day, but you know, I love his stuff. Now, this is a technique, remember, we've talked about. You don't want to just blop it on. If I just were to go right on there, I'm going to get these lines, and I don't want lines. So I'm going to start on my craft mat, swirling in, and then I'm going to get that swirl look. That's, that's pretty good there. And let's bring in a little bit of oh, rusty hinge. Just keep blending those in. Isn't that just, I just love doing this. I wish I could pay big money for doing this kind of stuff. I'd sit here all day, Steve. But you know, I guess I gotta go back to work tomorrow, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> now, my tumbled glass. I love it and I love, I might switch over to the broken china because it actually is my all time favorite. This one's a little lighter. I don't know, that looks pretty stinking cool. All right then. All right. You know, I'll use this on a card and I'll post it on my blog later on. Oh, this week or next sometime soon, but it'll be on there, so check back and you can see what I do with it. Because you know I never, ever, 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 ever throw anything away. Oh, I think I'll add a little more up here, just so I can finish off that card. Oh, well, there it worked. Shoo! I wasn't thinking and I went straight on there. That would have been a bummer. Let's add a little more of that. There we go. Now, is that like too stinking cool? Now watch what you can do. When you use your crackle paints... Make sure it's on there. You're going to shake it a little bit, like so. And then there's already a brush inside. Oh, and if that little cap comes off, you're supposed to be able oh, and it worked. Twist it back the other way, and it'll get back up in there. So there's your paint. You don't want to do like some people will do this, and they'll just wipe all of the crackle paint off of there, you know, oh, just, and they'll just barely put a little, well, you'll be there all day doing that. Also, I'm glad I did that. Do you see that little bit of green paint right there? Actually, it's ink. Do not get concerned about that. Just always have yourself a little paper towel. Wipe that off of there and just keep on going. So let me put this back in here and get me some of my crackle paint on there. I don't want that big of a glob. And you want a thin, not thin, let's call it medium, a medium coat on there, okay? And we're just going to do one side so you can see. And we're just going to do it right there. Now, this is going to take about 15... 20 minutes to dry, so obviously for video time, we're not going to sit here and wait for it to dry. Now, your next question is, well, why can't I hit it, heat it with a hit, hit it with a heat gun, for crying out loud? Well, I can, but it works so much better if you let it crackle first on its own. 
So for the best technique, just go away and do something else for half an hour and you know, get yourself a glass of iced tea or something and let it dry on its own. You will get such a much better, much, much better crackle. Um, once it does start cracking, if you're like in a big stinking hurry and you got to get her done, then after it begins to crackle on its own, go ahead and hit it with your heat tool. But I, I promise you, you will get a much better effect if you just let it sit and do it by itself. So we are going to let that just sit and dry. I don't know if the camera can see the where I've hit it with the... Uh, rock candy or not, but it's on there in certain little areas, so we'll let that dry on its own. While that's doing that, let me just show you. Someone asked me, how do you store all your stickles? I get a shoebox, and I get some of that plastic canvas stuff that people do cross-stitch on or something. I don't know what they do with it. And I cut myself these little dividers, and I keep it in my shoebox. So, for those of you that ask, there's how I do that. Alright, now, let me show you here. Let's bring in some more stuff to play with. This is just a regular piece of chipboard off of my Cheerio box, and I painted it with the pink, and I let it dry on its own. Can the camera pick up those crackles there, Steve? What do you think? He's raising his eyebrows. I don't know. Anyway, it's on there. Trust me. So now I'm going to go, and I'm going to bring back in the tea dye this time, and we're going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to blop it in there and try to get it in those cracks so you can see what it does. So we're just going to blop it down in there. Boy, it's changing it to kind of an orangey color, isn't it? Peachy, whatever. I think I want a little bit more down inside of there. So don't throw away those cereal boxes and those cracker boxes for crying out loud. It's the best darn chip board you could get. And you've already paid for it once. So eat all your goodies and save your boxes. I've got stacks and stacks, Steve can tell you. Then again, we're going to use my finger and I'm going to rub it in those cracks. Oh my goodness, this is looking good. I really hope the camera can pick this up to show how it really brings out the crackle. So if you're doing vintage pages or if you're doing masculine cards um, or even vintage cards and you want to make things look a little older, this is, oh man, that looks cool. I sure hope you all can see that because it really does look good in real life. Now I put a pop dot on the back of there, you know, you can crinkle this. It's still very pliable. You can see where I kind of bent it. I kind of like that look. Not everybody does, but I kind of like that look. So you can put your leaves going one way, or your petals I should say. And you could bring them going back the other direction. So there you are. Oh, I do like that. I wonder what would happen if I just put a little bit more in them cracks. You could play with this. You know the other thing, you could probably use um, a little bit of the black soot and get the same kind of effect. Yeah, we'll just kind of layer that. I kind of like that. Look, there we go. So there's that flower. Okay, now that's just chipboard. This is just regular cardstock. You can do the same kind of a thing. I just wanted to show you that I just took leftovers from my sponge and put that on there because I didn't want to waste that because I was trying that out. But here's a piece of regular cardstock, and I've gone ahead and put it on there. Now, this is a very, very, very thick um, coat of the rock candy. I'm sorry, not rock candy, this color. Broken China. And you can see it really cracked big time in there on its own. So I don't know what this is going to look like, so... Let's just try it and see. What the heck? We'll use the same dark color because I want it to really show up. Now some of the paint might chip off there, but again, this is a rustic look, so, you know, it's art. It's okay if it looks that way. And besides, it's your creation, and if somebody says, well, why is it that way? My answer is, because that's the way I wanted it. Hmm. Here you are. So again, I'm going to close that up because you want to make sure you keep those closed. I'm not going to rub this one as hard because it looks like it's going to chip off a lot of that. So I'm just going to kind of press it down in there. Well, it did change the look quite a bit. Gave it more of an aged look. How about that? There you are. Now, the coolest one of all. Let me wipe this from the sink off my desk here and get my fingers clean. Wait until you see my all-time favorite of all Distress Paints is the Picket Fence. Why? Because I love snowmen and I love Tim Holtz Grunge Board. This is his grunge board, and I used the movers and shapers, which I've done on other videos. There's the wish. Remember? Do you remember about those? Well, you can check the video and check those out. It's on there about movers and shapers with Tim or something or other. But anyhow, I cut out his snowman using his big die cut, put a mover and shaper in there, and got the wish. So, on this one, I did it with joy. Now, here's the scoop. I painted this really heavy with this white picket fence, so that's why we have all these little scum things hanging on the side. I kind of like this because it looks really rustic. And let me bring this in. Can you see the crackles on this one? 
oh, I just love this one. This is going to make the neatest vintage shaped Christmas card ever. Okay, now I'm going to bring in my tea dye. No, you know what? I think I might use. No, I don't. I will bring tea dye in. So here's my tea dye. Wait until you see what this does. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite one. No, he's not going to be a brown snowman. Oh, he might be. I don't know. I hope it doesn't turn out that way. It's not the way he's supposed to. All right, really going to get that ink down in those cracks. Look how the cracks are already starting to show up. Oh, I just love this stuff. Beauty. Oh, I'm supposed to not sing during my video. I need music on. Maybe that's what I need. Get that way down in those cracks. All right, let's give it a rub and see what happens. Oh, yeah, he's going to look vintage. I am loving. This one's my favorite. Yes, yes, yes. So, I'm sorry to tell everybody. I love all the others. This is my favorite. Picket fence. Make sure you get some of this one. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine snowflakes? Oh, i got to cut out snowflakes. He's got a snowflake die cut, I think. Oh, I'll have to do that. Oh, my goodness, girls, guys, whoever's out there, this is awesome. Look at that. A little bit too much right there. Take some of that brownie look off of there. Oh, wow. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. He looks like an old picket fenced snowman. Oh, I just love it. <sighs> oh, all right. Let me show you a couple more things and then we'll get out of here. I got this stuff all over my fingers. I might ruin my, my uh, flowers. I just wanted to show you with those Kaiser flowers what I did. Oh, I don't want to touch my card. I'll probably get all over there. Here we go. Do you see how I just have this blue? It started out this way. I'm just going to make him kind of brown just because there's a little wire that I hold on to and I just give it this. Ooh, look at that one. Even with a tea dye. Oh, I'm liking that. And that's all I did. Isn't that just so cool? Because you make this any color you want. You got to get some of these. I'm telling you, they're great. Ooh, I like that. I didn't think I'd like a brownish flower, but I kind of do. So there's that. And, oh, let me bring this in. This is one that dried earlier. Hmm, I'm going to have to use that somewhere. Remember how we did this one over here? It's still not dry. You know, for time of the camera, it's not. So I did it on here. And it's the same kind of colors. But look, you can see the, the real deep crevices of the of the stickle, or not the stickle, of the rock candy and how it crackled there. I'm going to try and put a little bit more. I just really want you all to get, I'm just loving that snowman. I'm just going to look at him. Let's see if we can get this to go a little bit darker. Let's see if I can show you here again. So I'm just going to rub that in. Oh yeah, that makes it show up much better. So the trick I guess I want to tell you about is when you're doing things with your distress paints, your distress inks, your distress stickles, Get your hands dirty. It's okay. It washes off. And if it doesn't, you can just say, I was working, and that's what happened. So there you go. Look at that. Can you see right here is the really cool part that makes it look aged. Well, let's see. Did I show them everything, Steve? I think I did. Mm -hmm. I think I did. Well, there you go. So that's the video for tonight. Make sure you hop over there to CropStop.com and get yourself some of this awesome Distress Crackle Paint. And don't forget the stickles. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.